Hello everybody and welcome to Toya at Home. April! On April the 1st, Mercury went retrograde. Now, those of you who watch me regularly know I will always flag up Mercury in retrograde. It went retrograde on the 1st of April, April Fool's Day, and it will be retrograde, I think, for about three weeks. I can't remember the exact date when it stops going retrograde. It's about the 25th of April, which seems a bit long, but it's long enough. Now, this time, it's in Aries. Now, this means that we need to think before we shoot our mouths off. This will test us emotionally. Now, normally and predictably, Mercury in retrograde makes everything mechanical not work. So the reason I'm in the kitchen today is my internet in my office isn't working. But we find that everything is affected during this period if it relies on electricity of any sort. But because we're in Aries, which is a fire sign, and it's a fiery time and Aries are strong leaders, we need to think about what we say before we say it. That's just a little bit of word of advice. We could word something that in print emotionally looks completely different to how we mean it. So we need to check meaning. Those accidents happen all the time, but they could happen even more. So read your emails, proofread, proofread your emails. And also, if you're going to declare your undying love for someone, really make sure you want to declare your undying love for someone and know who you're getting back in return. Um, and just ride through it. Now, normally, Mercury in return is a great time to contact your inner self. It's a deeply spiritual time. I keep telling myself that with every frustra frustration, I suffer hourly um, because I really dislike Mercury in retrograde. Um, but look it up. There's some fantastic forums on the internet, some great newspaper cuttings. Um, you've got The Cut, which is a New York blog. It's astrology, but it's fantastic. It's really clear. And what I love about the fact it's from New York, it really is about the intensity of communication because New York is so crowded. And when you're in crowded environments, things behave differently. So I am getting ready with the team for the unveiling. Now, this is my original copy of Warrior Rock, and it's coming out very, very soon in May. Um, but we are going to be unveiling the actual package, hopefully within um, a few days. So this is the original copy. It's been remastered, re-released with extra unheard tracks. And I found my double CD. <laughs> I mean, isn't this fantastic? This is so cute. What I love about packaging in the 80s. So you've got two CDs and I remember one was red, one was yellow. It's fabulous. And here, we were so excited about the plastic cassette. Let's see, yeah, purple inside. Now that's original. What you're getting is um, slightly transparent green vinyl. Now, what's really exciting me in the house this week is Robert is going through my past catalogue and he's going through the Toya catalogue to see what he wants to play in the set of Toya and Robert, the summer festivals. Now, this is really interesting because I can... Sincerely say my husband hasn't got a clue about anything I've done in the past. It's extraordinary. And I don't mean that as an insult. He just doesn't know what I've done in the past. He is very, very involved in his own career path and his own music. So he doesn't know what's on Sheep Farming and Barnet. He doesn't know what's on Blue Meaning or on Anthem or even Warrior Rock uh, or even The Minx. He just doesn't know. He knows about the humans because he was always there when Bill was here in this house with Chris Wong and I and we were writing. So Robert was always there and he played on Strange Tales and Sugar Rush. And by the way, I think Sugar Rush is one of the greatest albums ever made. Another reason for that is we've been listening to it. So at the moment, Robert is next door listening to IER. And our plans for the summer shows, is we're going to integrate more Toya into the shows. It's all still classic rock. 
and we're adding one classic rock song that everyone will know from another artist that is just going to put a smile on your face. But we want to keep the energy right up there. This year, the idea of the show is it's an energy level and we're going to keep it right held up. It's never going to pull back. Even we're thinking of adding Barefoot on Mars from Posh Pop. But I said to Robert, if we add that, the energy stays right up there. The voice can go down to that emotional pain, but the band, no. We, we are pushing a boundary here where we want the audience to experience a lot of energy from what we're playing. So this is a really interesting concept for me and IER fits into it really well. And Robert, so far, he's been going through Posh Pop. Um, he's just about to go through Blue Meaning, but he is focusing mainly on IER. And then we're going to integrate what I think are really beautiful Toya songs, high energy Toya songs into the high energy of classic rock at the festivals. And we're just gonna see what happens. It's a fascinating concept. It's probably been done before, but I think what's really lovely is we realized at Isle of Wight last year and at Glastonbury last year, an, a huge percentage of that audience knew my material, my original material. So we're gonna honor that and we're gonna look into that and see what journey we can take the audience on this year. So coming up in June, and remember, we still haven't announced everything we're doing this year. So we have um, a concert in Bridport, and we have a concert, The Regal in Evesham. We have Isle of Wight. Uh, we've got quite a few others, can't remember off the top of my head, but they're all on my website. We are getting ready for these festivals. And we are, we know what we do works because it worked so beautifully last year. So that first step has been taken. We're now taking it the next step where you have a great band and two great band leaders who can hold that ball up, that energy up for a whole hour, hour and a half. And we're going to see what happens. We think it's really, really exciting. <laughs> So having had Easter weekend, we managed to do some catch-up TV watching and I had some catch-up music listening. Completely in love with Beyonce, um, Cowboy, Carter and Miley Cyrus, Two Most Wanted. Just profoundly moved at the sheer technical genius of everyone involved, Beyonce and Miley Cyrus, but also the handling of the songs. It's really inspiring. And at this time, I'm writing with Simon Darlow but we are writing very much in the vein for Toya and Robert. We're writing very powerful rock. But what is so beautiful uh, about um, Cowboy, Cowboy Carter is the beats are pulled right back. It's about the voices, it's about the bass. And I, I find that really interesting because they give the impression of drum power, but they're, for me, the, the drums aren't dominating these beautiful voices, uh, which is something I've been a little bit passionate about for quite a few decades. Um, so that was lovely to catch up on all of that and be so greatly moved by the music. We've been watching Motown Hitsville. Oh, I mean, I was a punk rocker around this time. Um, I grew up with brilliant Motown as a child, as a very young um, child not in my teens yet but then I moved into punk rock and I sometimes think you know would I would music have been served better or would I have served mu music better if I realized just how remarkable every Motown song was and the rhythm and the beat and the placement and the structure I mean it, it, Hitsville is a gorgeous gorgeous documentary series it's uh I think it's in no, it's a documentary. Absolutely wonderful, wonderful. And also, we've been watching Night Country, um, Jodie Foster. And I just love the casting on this. It's been such exciting casting. Um, I absolutely adore Kellis Reese in it. it um, Fiona Shaw. Now, Fiona was um, a cousin of 
my very, very bestest friend, Veronica, um, sadly no longer with us. So I used to bump into Fiona a lot, but I just so enjoyed the bleakness, the darkness of it, the unpredictability of it. Very, very inspiring to watch. Immediately, I am getting ready for the Viva La Rock Awards, where apparently, I suppose I'm not allowed to tell you, am I? Um, I'm up for an award. Uh, so that's going to be fun. 12th of April. Uh, there is going to be, let me see who's going to be there. Sham69, Rutz DC, Kirk Brandon. Oh, adorable Kirk Brandon. I remember Kirk from uh, Mayhem where he used to rehearse Spear of Destiny. And he was such a sweetie. And I remember his guitar sound developing. Very deep kind of um, hillbilly sound coming out of the guitar. And he, he was just so wedded to his music. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him again. So we will see you tonight for a very zany, crazy, upbeat moment. Tomorrow there will be a vintage Sunday lunch and we have already shot the brand new Sunday lunch for the end of April because Robert's going to be in Argentina. April is absolutely flat out. We are going out in celebration of Warrior Rock. We're going out with the utterly brilliant War Boys with Simon Phillips on drums and this was performed live at the Beat Club in Germany in 1982. Enjoy! Lots of love from Toya. This one is called <laughs> The War Boys. Sublime. 